Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's daily brief recap. Uh, it is Thursday. Uh, we are the 14th of uh, November. Of course, we've got options expiry coming up tomorrow. Uh, and Thursdays means baby powder report at TRI. Um, and it's really cool, uh, you know, the evolution of everything uh, watching. Uh, we gave Julian a little bit more uh, room in the uh, report, and hopefully uh, down the road here, Thursday becomes Julian's day. Um, and the feedback from site members uh, was uh, very positive. Uh, talked uh, about his very unique way of looking at the market, the tools that he likes to use, uh, RSI with uh, Tom DeMarc and Keltner channels and stuff like that. Uh, all I really care is you just have three unrelated reasons to consider taking a trade and just make sure to keep following those same reasons over and over and over. Uh, watch yourself for making mistakes. Uh, make sure to pay yourself when the market uh, affords you the opportunity, etc., etc. So uh, with uh, um, Julian's unique approach, um, it's great to see that the model you know, the process of uh, building trade ideas, it's basically the same thing. Um, it's just he is a very unique, he likes using his own personal tools, and so it's a very refreshing uh, look at the market. So really cool stuff, Julian. Thank you very much for your report today. Um, I have, uh, of course, uh, a little chart deck, uh, and it's actually getting a little easier for us to do this now. Uh, it's taken me a little bit while to sort of grow into my, uh, you know, get my sea legs when it comes to these reports. But I do see that on a consistent basis. Um, we start off with just a little bit of talk about currencies. Uh, and you can see the levels that I've set up now on uh, U.S. dollar. So our reference, reference uh, framework shouldn't really change too much. Um, as you can see, U.S. dollar index enjoying a bit of a down day, and you know, ironically enough, kind of like just like Bitcoin, sort of caught in the middle of a very wild range. So you know, very no man's landy. We can have days up, days down, that kind of thing, no problem here. Uh, I was watching uh, the European currencies, and I noticed I'm starting to see some. Uh, signs of failure out of them um, but uh, at the same time too you know wondering whether we're going to be setting up uh, new uh, potential trades you can see I actually drew this on a week or so ago so you know these uh, counter trend rallies back up into resistance levels might actually even set up a new foray for me into the European currencies because I on balance I do like the idea of being short the European currencies it's just of course finding the setup um, so that's, I guess, uh, specifically about U.S. dollar. I suppose we should talk just a little bit about risk on, risk off, because clearly that's a, a significant shift is happening here in the market as we speak. Um, you know, if we uh, just look at something like uh, stocks, you know, the market has been one way pretty much since the beginning of October. And interestingly enough, even Bitcoin's lows of uh, mid-October are still holding in here. Um you know, but uh, in a weird sort of way, you can kind of visually see the momentum uh, staggering here a little bit. You know, this high, violent move up. This high, little less violent move up. This high, little less violent move up. Most recent high, very small movement up. So you can almost see the uh, momentum of the market shifting uh, and maybe at the very uh, best, just getting tired and it has to consolidate a bit. Um, you know, oil itself, uh, yes, carving out new highs, but again, sort of that momentum conversation, the highs are getting lower and lower versus the previous highs. And we might even M out here. Um, Bitcoin's still very disconnected. How much of Bitcoin is risk on, risk off? How much of Bitcoin is, as one uh, affectionate uh, viewer of these videos suggests, it's completely manipulated and it has nothing to do with the broader market's uh, risk on, risk off. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, you know, tinfoil hats, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I am going to sort of keep watching this. And ironically enough, uh, if Bitcoin is the ultimate leading indicator, and you can see how it was starting to uh, 
come down earlier uh, and then you know like in this case Bitcoin dropped and then stocks dropped and crude dropped you know maybe Bitcoin's a harbinger of the future tough to say I think you can clearly see the risk off assets are all cranking higher here today um, we had sort of talked recently about you know being at the bottom of megaphones on things like the yen um, and uh, we talked about how the bond chart itself had just tons of gaps that needed to be filled in and we also talked a little bit even in yesterday's free video about gold stock indexes looking a little bit happier and I might even start going shopping in some gold stocks I think on balance um, you know uh, so you know <laughs> we're gapping higher so guaranteed we're not done filling in all these gaps it's just a question of when this is a ETF on the bonds that trade 24 7 so it is understandable the gaps but nonetheless two straight higher days of gapping action my hunch is probably up into this area we run into resistance and then seriously test these lows to find out whether the bottom is actually in um, we talked about Japanese yen and that that megaphone pattern, and I think that's still very much the case. Ironically enough, you could have yen actually rally all the way right back up into this uh, 93 area, no problem. Um, coming up against this downtrend line, though, it does it makes complete sense that we're running into a bit of traffic here, and really, you might just get like a spike up and then an M on the other side of the trend line, and then we accept back below it again. You might just get like a quick little tag here and then the trend line's just too violent and it fails. You might get a blast through the trend line and a nice little W on the other side of the trend line and that would set up actually a nice continuation trade, a little bot set up to actually go long uh, the yen. So be watching that closely and of course that's, you know, again that conversation about US dollars in a very wide trading range. It could move around here a lot. Uh, with these uh, currencies just sort of jockeying back and forth. Lots of room to the downside on the U.S. dollar index. Lots of room still on the upside. So it can go either way here, no problem. Um, so, and then finally the gold. And yesterday the big conversation about gold was, you know, just um, what were we going to do at 38.2? And, you know, if you're watching this and you're kind of like, you know, I'd like to get like little rules that I can add to my trading to try and help me make better decisions. Uh, of course, this is a key concept in our education program. 38.2 fibs. We like to call it the Ray Burchette level. Um, affectionately, we had the nickname Ray Barbecue, but uh, the gentleman who taught me this and the significance of 38.2 was Ray Burchette. Um, we fractaled yesterday, so that bottom um, support level is confirmed with the fractal breakout. And if anything right now, my sort of hunch is, is 38.2s in today's rally peak. And, you know, we might even perk up a little bit more here further today. Tough to say if any bombshells are dropped out of that U.S. congressional Hearing about uh, the president, you know, that's probably going to uh, sway risk on, risk off kind of thinking. Um, as well, too, um, we kind of got news out recently uh, that it turns out that the trade deals that were talked up and, oh, yeah, we're close to doing deals. Turns out they never, they aren't. Um, so in a weird sort of way, that sort of trade deal, uh, big question mark is still floating out there. And I think that's another reason why uh, the bond market has caught a bit of a bid. Certainly not trending signals. Did I say bond market? I meant gold market. Sorry. Sorry. Certainly not trending signals, but uh, I think we have the bottom of a range established here. Uh, and I had sort of alluded to it a little bit yesterday. We did actually have really interesting, both 38.2 off a higher time frame, and 78.6 fib off a lower time frame level on uh, Barrick come in here and we've broken through that downtrend line. So now the question ultimately is can we W on the other side of this trend line now? Um, and uh, I spent a lot of time yesterday talking about little gold stocks and gold indexes. That's basically the same conversation there. 
the question ultimately here is, is this setting up a base for a move to new highs, or is it just nothing more than a counter trend rally within a top just to take us back up into appropriate shorting locations? This uh, bot setup level, you can see that's going to just take us back up against those highs from uh, late summer. And Barrick's got its uh, big old reload zone right up against its original top from back there in August, September. So a uh, little bit early to call an outright buy signal. You know, hats off to those who uh, did uh, hunt this level against this key low. We kind of talked about how was the market going to act against these key lows. And I would, you know, ironically enough, we did sort of the back and forth squigglies here. I would still say back and forth squigglies. But if we can start actually W-ing out here, then I think we actually have the basis for some sort of rally here. So keep, uh, keep your eyes peeled. And now seasonally, we're finally back into that time of year when actually we can think about buying gold. So uh, that's sort of risk on, risk off conversation. You know, counter trend rallies uh, back into resistance. How deep and how strong are the rallies? For now, I'm thinking counter trend rally back up into original shorting locations, back up into tops. But can you make money on those moves? Sure. Um, thought it was interesting. Uh, I uh, was taught an old uh, venture cap uh, investment model, VCIM, venture cap investment model, uh, by an old VSC floor broker many, many years ago. And uh, uh, right around this time of year, that's actually what I spend a lot of time concentrating on because uh, in essence, in venture cap land, stocks are often recycled. Um, the actual stock trading vehicle these days is pretty damn expensive. It's like, you know, a quarter of a million dollars for one of these damn vehicles to go from like absolutely nothing to actually having a fully legal, fully uh, accredited uh, trading vehicle. They're expensive. So quite often what ends up happening is companies that are dead and their ventures are toast another venture will come along and uh, you know maybe a couple guys trying to put together a project and they will actually take over the dead old stock and just restructure it it's far less expensive than going and creating a whole new stock out of nothing so uh you know um because of capital gains tax implications there's a lot of incentive uh for people to actually sell rolled back stock into the end of the year so if you know what you're looking for and there are signs of value, options to directors, shares for debt, that kind of thing, this is basically our shopping window. Um, and a number of stocks with very low share counts, uh, that's one way we sort of screen. So we want to make sure the stock is less than about 25 million out. Um, that uh, interestingly enough, uh, if all we do is just get a rally back to the 50% rule, from current prices, these are the kind of rates of return we're looking at. So, you know, the funny thing is for like uh, mom and pop, uh, I want 10%, 20% out of the stock market. This kind of investing just blows them away. You know, and it's, uh, it's why there's such an appeal to venture capital. But the long and short of it is, uh, you know, through uh, and into the end of the year, I will be focusing in on a lot of these names. Um, and you can see, you know, stock, uh, and it's funny, the Americans call it a uh, reverse split, you know, so they put the S here. But in essence, like this one was rolled back eight for one. This one was rolled back, you know, you can just go through the list. So anyway, uh, where am I going with all this? It was interesting to see that uh, one of the names that was on the radar that came up here is this uh, blockchain uh, K2 Corp. Um, and I'm looking very closely at blockchain stocks. You know, I'm very interested in altcoin, uh, the big altcoin names, weekly W's, all that kind of stuff. And I'm also keeping a real close eye on venture cap um, uh, stocks. And, you know, you should look at this blue chart uh, here and just go, well, it makes sense. I can see why Beamish would be buying some of that. So, you know, into the end of the year, we may actually be given some really interesting tax loss selling opportunities. Uh, keeping a close eye on this riot, I took a little long stab off it earlier in the year, but uh, that got stopped out. Uh, but still watching it very closely, and you can see, you know, she's trying to bottom here. So I keep a close eye on it. And then also, too, I'm a really big fan of, uh, this is a Canadian company. There are some Dutch guys, and uh, Seward, of course, is Dutch, and 
My mother's name is Vandermeulen, so uh, I've got Dutch in me, so uh, I kind of uh, warm to these guys. So I'm keeping a real close eye on this hut mining, and you know, Dutch or not, um, it is, uh, they, I think they are a very efficient miner in the blockchain space, and they're a public company. So, you know, if Brick Crypto really is turning, I want to see signs of a bottom out of hut here. And the interesting thing is, as you can see, it's got that same sort of weekly W kind of behavior. We'll watch how it acts into the, these lows uh, through tax loss selling season. If we can start Wing out here, man, I'm going to be all over this one too. All right, heading over to crypto in particular. Um, you know, Bitcoin right now. Ironically enough, I don't think Bitcoin is actually the big selling feature in crypto right now. I think uh, basically uh, we're, you know, and we've talked at length about this, you know, basically in no man's land, right? Something like that. This isn't really the place you want to like go up and, you know, place the big bets. Uh, market could go either direction here, no problem. What's bothersome too about this range is big old wick up top, wicks and tails like to be eaten. Big old tail down below, wicks and tails like to be eaten. And what I'm worried about here is this low, you know, it did not hit this mountain man level. So, you know, if this was harmonic and Fibonacci and all that kind of stuff, it should hit 61.8. So that's a little bit of a, uh-oh, I don't know, that's a bit suspicious down there. Um... And my general message to the public is, you know what, just cool your jets here. There's, there's no reason to go and bet the farm here. Um, and, you know, where are our weekly Ws where you want to really take your shot? Well, you can see it's basically off of that level right there. That's 4200 bucks. So be careful, everyone. That's still less than half of what we are right now. Um... So, you know, through the daily brief and uh, Julian's conversation, we talked a little bit about this. You know, this is going down to the lower time frames. Um, and, uh, well, maybe before we get into that, we just quickly uh, hire. Where the hell is my higher time frame ones? Uh, what did I do with it? Uh, maybe I got rid of it. Anyway, um, uh, it's Mr. RSI. Uh, here we are. Um, you know, we've been talking uh, a lot recently about how I was kind of hoping to see trend continuation. Well, the problem is we just keep making lower lows. Every time we make lower lows, that means that these numbers have to be dragged down. We got to hit our reset button and start our count all over again. So uh, with this most recent low, at best, we have one low, two lows. Maybe we can get some sort of bottoming, but we're coming awfully close to 66, which will basically put the bot away. Um, and you guys probably remember my frustrations, right? I took a long shot off of this. That's fine. Get stopped out. I had nice little M's, three separate highs. Took a short off of here. Got stopped out. All right, fine. Then woohoo! And then woohoo! And then what was worse was okay, I was like, all right, let's uh, hunt a short one, two, three, and then woohoo! Ah, geez, that messes all that up. And then woohoo! I mean, this this market's a mess right now. Um, and you know, our my recent videos were just simply okay, we've got big ass wicks. Remember that conversation about the weekly chart? Same thing off of the hourlies. Nothing really changes here. Ironically, it's the same principles. So, uh, where the hell is that damn hourly chart? Actually, I think it was this one that I had it on right here. So, uh, you can see the wicks and the tails. This is why this, uh, you know, when you see this kind of action, it's so dangerous. We know that wicks and tails like to be eaten. And this was the process of them marching up, eating into that wick, releasing those bear, uh, bulls, right? So they all could get off. Market rolls over, lower highs. And look at, um, well, anyway, point of the matter here is you can start seeing M's, you know, uh, back down to the bottom end of the range. Here we are now into this tail, and you get this kind of price action. Now, you know, for the day traders, if you're like, if you identify this crazy ass range, well, hunting shorts up at the top end of this range, 
hunting longs at the bottom end of the range. There's nothing wrong with that. They say markets like to range 70-80% of the time. Uh, and this morning, uh, we had people on the TRI site, which I was very proud of. And what I just wanted to show you, this is a perfect example of, uh, uh, you know, a, a guys that I used to trade with in the pits who were professional traders. They'd see this W, they'd see all of these tails, right? And I even put the dotted line, like perfect trade location right against all these candle body lows, especially since that's like a close. This opened here and went up, but nonetheless, all down against this area here. And of course, there's good old Mountain Man just sitting there at his 61.8. So this, and then this dump right into this level was a perfect uh, New York kill zone uh, back up into key support, give all the professional traders the window to put on the trade. Um, and, you know, what I was explaining to in the daily brief is typically uh, Brandon used to just basically sell half his position on something like a return to the mean. And in this particular case, I've got a VWAP on here. Uh, move his stop to scratch on remaining, and he'd probably still be in the remainder of his trade. Doesn't look like it traded back down here after that level was hit. Um, so he'd still be in half of the trade uh, with the half of his trade booked at uh, the VWAP here. So really good example of, um, you know, the uh, principle of wicks and tails, the principle of reload zones within these wide ranges. Really, really good example of day traders. So actually, we had a really cool uh, summary of all that in the daily brief today. And the cool part about it was, of course, I come on the site and our traders are getting pretty good at uh, their craft. Um, and there were guys that were actually posting charts. Hey, I got this bull div. I got this RSI breakout. I got OBV breaking out. I went and bought some of this, which is perfectly, uh, you know, it's a trader's trade. And interestingly enough, just off of that uh, range, um, actually, this is... Uh, well, I guess the high to there, down to that low there. I don't know if that's relevant. But 50% levels, you notice, uh, you know, if we've got our levels drawn correctly here, is the POC. My hunch is if this trade actually works, we're probably going to go back up and tag value high right up into these areas. But what a great analogy of a range uh, market. So that's sort of what I see happening on the corn right now. Higher time frame still pointing down. Um, and lower time frames into that ranging environment dealing with those monster Wixton tails right now. Um, I thought I'd just finish off the video with uh, an example yet again. You're seeing a lot of this coming into this space now. Hopefully everybody can see what does the process of assets turning the corner and going from a bear market into a bull market look like. Well, Often they usually put in these very fast little W's, right? Nice bottom down here, produce a nice little rally. You could probably, I mean, my hunch is this is probably 38.2, like we talked about with Ray Burchette, maybe even off of that entire range. Um, yeah, pretty close, not bad. Um, but in essence, I would just simply say is, you know, this is sort of your first stab at trying to find a bottom big rally, you know, on the weekly charts, that's gonna look like a V bottom, so we should come down and test those lows. And I do often see this, where we come down and test these lows and then do little FUs. This is venture capital after all. Um, I like the idea that this thing is trying to form a bottom. I don't think there's any great hurry here because we broke to new lows here. My hunch is it probably does something along these lines. And then, uh, you know, in fact, actually what would be really cool is uh, to do a bar pattern. Who knows what this is going to look like, but I wouldn't be shocked if it sort of takes some sort of similar pattern to this. Um, you can see there's a bit of it. This, this bottom took a while to turn back up. This one was fairly violent. But... I guess what I'm thinking now, and this is what I really wanted to try and convey to you, is can you kind of see that a lot of these altcoins now are establishing a floor? Um, you know, down in this area, right, I think probably whoever's running this story, that's value. Nice, <laughs> nice box. 
Um, and, you know, 38.2s, you can see this is basically the last time that they really stopped uh, any sort of bottoming attempts. So there's a bunch of trap people. There's, of course, a bunch of trap people up there. But in essence, this area here, I think, actually represents stiff resistance. And you're probably going to find a lot of your coins are just going to basically park themselves into a nice polite range here for the next little while. Um, and so, you know, uh, people have been asking about this uh, VET and if I would participate in it and how would I? Um, and I just simply say, um, you know, because this is a new low, I don't know whether this thing's actually bottomed yet or not. But hopefully everybody can see. Uh, I'm just going to drag my uh, fib tool up. I'm going to draw my reload zones. And hopefully what you notice is, oh, gee whiz, there's a gap right in that level. So uh, as we go forward in time, what I would be watching for, for whatever it's worth, is can I get a nice pullback and a nice W, you know, something along those lines. I mean, I guess we would maybe even like it to be deeper. I often see, uh, you know, this is venture capital and crypto. I often see, and Bitcoin loves to do this, where it comes down and it actually puts in the bottom off the 78.6. So I don't know how you want to approach this, but hopefully you see that similar sort of theme. I can't chase. It's interesting. We're down. This definitely the market off a longer time frame basis sees some sort of value down here. So if I did want to be a buyer, what should I do? And that's sort of what I'm thinking on names like this right now. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, gave you sort of an overview of what I'm seeing in the market right now from a number of different perspectives. Uh, you know, VCIM, love this kind of thinking um, and uh, buying when they're crying kind of thinking in the market. And there's even a blockchain stock uh, in that space that's uh, telling us to pay attention. All right, have yourselves a great day, everybody. All the best, and bye for now.